I'm hoping that we've learned how to help folks that need help. But also being able to tell what stage people are in. That make any sense? Okay. So today we're going to go back and finally read this text for the last time uh, during this series. If you got it, say, I got it. Half of you all could quote it without even looking at it. And go ahead and do that. We're going to read just so that those who are listening to a CD or uh, driving in their car, you know, they can't see what we're, we're looking at. So let's read this aloud and establish a base for our sermon. And the Bible says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Our final installment is simply entitled, What Then? What Then? Final review lets us know that there's a process to everything. Anybody got that now? You got that? There's a process to anything. Every accomplishment that you've, ac- that you've accomplished in your life are the result of things you've done over time. Amen. Don't ever allow anybody to cheapen your accomplishment because you did it. I mean, everybody do that. No, they don't. Normally, when people try to diminish your accomplishments, it means they're trying to bring you back to their level. Whatever you've done over time and you actually did it yourself, you be proud of that thing. Amen. 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 If you paid off your car, drive it till the wheels fall off. <laughs> now, I ain't trying to get no car note. I, look, I've been driving the same car for almost seven years. I get it, I get it washed every Saturday night. I pull up in that spot out there. You got the same car, Pastor? Yes, I am. I'm proud of the fact I've had a car note for four years. It makes me feel good. Shoot, you can style in Durango if you got style. You can. <laughs> so tap to that shoulder and say, be proud of your accomplishments. Tap them on the shoulder and say, be proud of your accomplishments. Yeah, don't be ashamed of what you've done. We, 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 we were able in the last few weeks, both naturally and spiritually, talk about the staging of healing. Talked about how the land is healed. And you should have these four in your notes somewhere in some form. Don't have time to go back over everything. But we talked about the first stage of realization. When you read First, Second Chronicles 7, Uh, 14, you see these four things, but this is a way of looking at it. It's different. Realization. Becoming fully aware of something as a fact. That's called humility. Because sometimes the facts will make you humble. Stopping the bleeding. You have to get to that point. Then number two, response. A reaction to something. In the spiritual, it's called prayer. My people humble themselves and pray. Number three, reconciliation. The restoration of friendly relations. Seek his face. Yeah, he saves you, but sometimes we get out of his presence. And in the Old Testament, the word face means the presence of God. Church itself is not the presence of God. You can be present in the building. You can work in the church and not know God. And so there's that reconciliation. And then finally, realignment. That's when that, uh, you get to that former position or state. The Bible says, turn from their wicked ways. Go in that direction. We, last week, we talked about how God talked about those ways, those wicked ways. And we said that ways are what? The most difficult thing for us to change. You can have a great season of, of humility and prayer and seeking God's face and still not get healed because you don't turn from your wicked ways. It's those ways we need help with. Is that right? It's part of our will. I don't know if, how many of you all saw this week. Um, there was a story about an elderly lady, at least a black woman, who was released from prison about 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. And, and Halle Berry is supposed to be doing a movie about on, on her life. She's 83 years old. And she's one of the most renowned jewel thieves in the world. Sister, black woman, gracious look, looking, look like a mama in the church. And they said she sold over, how many millions of dollars? Over $2 million in jewelry herself. And, and they're going to make a movie about her. Well, they put her back in jail this week. 
They put mama back in prison, threw her from the train. Yes, they did, um, because mama went down to uh, Palm Springs and sold, stole a $125,000 ring because she couldn't change her ways. Now, they're going to make a movie about her. I know. Just think about that for me. I know I'm going to finish up, but think about that. It's hard sometimes to turn from your wicked ways. Our last lesson of our series, write this in your notes. Direct action creates results. Direct action creates results. The word direct means a straight route. I tell people, just come on with it. If you're going to bring something, just bring it. If we're going to deal with something, let's just deal with it. Let's not go all the way around the tree. I hate folks that go, I mean, look, what are we talking about here? Let's talk about what we're dealing with. Am I, am I right in church? Yeah. Ain't you tired of folks? Well, no, let's just talk about this. We're talking about you now. Direct action, both naturally and spiritually, create results. Write down the word result. It means to come about as an effect or consequence. Direct action makes things happen. It's a natural law. It's a spiritual law. You got to just get to the root of the thing. If my people will call by my name, the Bible says, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then. Here's what God says. When my, if, I'm talking about folks who don't, have never known me. This is not about folks who have never known God. This is about people that have known God and turned from God and made God a mockery. They, they know honey, but they prefer vinegar. And he said, now, if my people do that, I'll deal directly with them. But it's not, you can't just say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's, that's for mistakes. But there is a process for the land to be healed. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, then. Write down the word then. At that, in or at that time, then. Here's the definition I like, bro, in that case. Because in this context, Brother Freddie, in the scriptures, uh, the word then is a response more than a time. Some people in your family already have them then. And other folks are still dealing with it right now. Because your, your actions will make then happen. Then can happen sooner, depending on how you treat God. I mean, this is not a time where God's waiting until Christmas. God doesn't have to wait until Christmas to give you a gift. Then, write that down. Some of you need to understand that. Stop getting jealous of folks when God bless them. Their then may get there before your then gets there, but all of us are dealing on our own individual situations. Y'all see that in church? I believe this. I believe that sick communities change when behaviors change. Because behavior has a direct effect on conditions. You see, the reality is there's a process for a neighborhood to become successful. It's called economics. What are economics? Well, that's relating to trade and industry and the creation of wealth. I don't care how long you pray. Unless a community comes together and changes behavior, it's not going to change. There has to be stewardship. There has to be some unity in it. And so a community gets better when you begin to deal with the economic parts of it. On your bulletin, on the front cover, on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a new diagram, a new, a new uh, illustration there. And somebody said, that's not the church. What is that? It's what's on the screen right now. Amen. What that is, that's the first actual uh, mock-up of your new strip mall. Amen. That's what's coming next summer. The big building in the back, that's the health center. 
where you had your picnic out there in the middle of the land. That's, see, you got to understand, that's not even the big buildings. Th th this is not the Red Lobster or the, or the anchor store near the front where the light's going to be. This is just the strip mall. In the middle. That's the pharmacy. Uh, that, matter of that middle one of the V there, they've already uh, turned in their paperwork to us. They don't have the money yet, but that's B&B International Import. That's actually a designer, Interior Design Corporation. They're moving their company to Vernon Park Village. Okay, okay. See, I have never understand folks that get more excited about other folks' stuff than you get for yourself. You drive all the way out to Northfield and buy a pair of shoes for a thousand dollars, and when I show you what God is about to give you, you sit there with your finger up your nose. I never understood that. I just believe what my granddad taught me. Son, if they don't let you play with their ball and their yard, come on over here, I'll get your own ball. You play in your own yard. I've seen what Chicago's doing. I see how Chicago's taking over the South Side and what they're building and telling us we can't have nothing. Make you get out and march up and down the street to, to pour some concrete on a sidewalk. There's more dirt in the world. And all those folks are negotiating with us right now. Now, all the money's not in yet. I, we'll deal with that a little later on. But the reality is if a community's going to grow, you have to look at it in a certain way. There must be some then time. Now, I'm not doing this to make nobody mad. I don't care who don't like it or who don't like what. But I'm tired of begging folks for stuff. I'm tired of us spending all this money for everybody else. Ain't nobody spending no money with us. Now, you sit there and act like you want to act. I remember since Shawnee's 11 years ago when I went down to mayor. You remember with the mayor daddy's office? Because we were trying to buy up half of Stony Island. Yeah. See, all of this up and down here is supposed to be ours. Yeah. And he told us to, matter of fact, he wouldn't even come out of his office. Yeah. Mayor Sawyer was with us. Yeah. And he sent word out there by some lackey, well, you can't have none. Yeah. You can't build over there. Yeah. You, you don't pay taxes. Well. That's all, right. All, right. all right. There's more than one way to cook a chicken. And sometimes then take a little while. Now, I'm saying this to you all because I'm tired of arguing with my own people about making you successful. Stop bragging on heaven. You can't make heaven better. If I go to hell, heaven's still going to be heaven. But I sure can make Linwood better. They need them stores out there. Them people are welcoming us out there. Tell them, Mother Sims, they want us to come. All right, Don, I'm getting this off me today. <laughs> Just like sick communities change when behavior changes, sick marriages change when behavior changes. When people start changing their behavior towards one another when they, when they start respecting each other and being honest with each other, paying attention to one another. Even sick churches change when behavior changes, when folks pray more and, and complain less, when they love God and love one another. I believe this. Revival is a result of changed behavior. So, so, so whether you want to be a holistic community or a holistic marriage or a holistic church, that means that not only do you own some peace, but you can actually partner with somebody and be successful. You must have a then moment. God says then. It's not a time. It's subject to your behavior. So here's a question. Pastor January, in your last 17 minutes, if I adhere to all the process that you've talked about in the Bible, what then? What then? If I do exactly what God says, what then? Well, when you read 2 Chronicles 7:14, this is a godly conditional promise. What it means is it carries the weight of God with it. God cannot go against his word, even if he don't like you. Amen. There are some promises that have nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with behavior. The Bible talks about whatever you sow, you're going to reap. 
So bad people can sow and reap something good from it if they sow in the right place. It carries the weight of God. It carries the faithfulness of God. So in, in my last few minutes, let me show you what then. The Bible says, God said, if my people fall away from me and if they come back in this condition, there will be three things they will see. Number one, they, they, they will hear from heaven. Today you hear from me, but the Bible says if you find yourself in a place where you're away from God and you're under judgment, you will hear from heaven. Now, I've been in church long enough to know that every once in a while, when things don't go your way, you ask questions like this. Will God ever answer me? Can God hear me? I mean, God, can, can you actually hear what I'm saying here? One man put it this way. He said, the heavens are nothing but brass, and nothing comes back from it. He had gotten so bitter with God, he said, nothing comes back from heaven. But let me assure you of this, that God hears his children when they pray. Look in your Bible when it says, then I will hear from heaven. That means in the Hebrew, heaven will be notified. If I do this, heaven will be notified. Write down the word hear from the Hebrew. It means to hear with intelligence. God understands every language. He can even read body language. God hears groans. He will hear it intelligently. And it says often with the implication of paying very close attention. I don't care who you are. I don't care how, how rich or how unrich you might be. No matter if you're white or black, Republican or Democrat or independent, whether you vote or not, it doesn't really matter. But if you get in the right place with God, the Bible says that heaven will be notified. His cell phone will ring. Ding, ding, ding. You got a message. God will hear your prayer. Please don't sit there and think he ain't talking about me. That's, that's why I'm saying it, because God just heard you think that and told me to tell you that God just heard what you thought. God will hear your prayers. God hears the prayers of his children. If you've ever looked in Revelation, uh, John the Revelator had this vision. Go to chapter number 8. Don't have a long time to explain to you, but there were so many things in heaven that he saw. But one of the things he saw in Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, chapter 8, verse number 3. Let's read it together. Verse 3 and 4. Uh, it's on the screen now. Look what Paul said. He saw all these angels and things. And he said in verse 3, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar and he was given much incense to offer along with what the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front verse 4 the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. Peep the picture. Your prayers are so, your long prayers and your short prayers. Your late in the midnight hour prayers, along with your church prayers, bless us prayers. Your crying prayers, along with your ha ha prayers. The Bible says they rise up to heaven like the dew in the morning. The Bible says your prayers don't just lay there. They go past the clouds. They go past the stars. They go up to the third heavens. And they, they don't go in by themselves because it is a kingdom, because it's a mansion. The butlers of heaven, they, they say, may I ask you up, you please? And they divide the prayers of the saints from all the other junk that comes from the earth. And they take the prayers of the saints and they lay them on a silver platter. They walk them before God and they say, Father in heaven, I want you to know I have a message here from your children. And the Bible says that those prayers don't lay there on the plate. They begin to rise up to God's palate. My question why wouldn't you pray every prayer you prayed in honesty and sincerity for God God has heard every even when you was a little baby Lord bless my mommy 
Lord, help my daddy. God said, he heard those prayers. That's why you train up a child in the way they should go. So when they get old and they may slip away a little bit, they know how to get back to it. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Write this in your notes. He is near you now. I know your wife's going through right now because her nephew died yesterday. 37 years old, people ain't supposed to die that young. I know Mildred's hurting right now, but God hears her prayers. He hears all our prayers right now. Write it down. He's near you. He won't put you on hold when you pray. So, So he says, I will hear from heaven. That's what keeps us going. Because life gets tough. Here's the issue. Blessed assurance is that he's heard what you prayed and he's working on your situation. He said, okay, let me, let me deal with that. But if you fall away from him, the second thing he said he'll do, he will forgive their sin. Understand the level of sin these people were under. They had done all kinds of habitual, crazy things. Write down the word forgive. It means to pardon. It means to spare. Say, God, I'm going to spare them. I'm going to spare. Even though they're guilty of everything, didn't nobody get the story wrong. (laughs) Ain't nobody lying on them. Have you ever known when you were wrong? Yep, I was sinking deep in sin. Sinner, sure enough. White collar, blue collar, no collar at all. But the the great thing about what God said he'll do, even when we mess up on him, Brother Charles, God God says, I will forgive you. (sighs) Psalm 32. The Bible says, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and whose spirit is no deceit. Wait a minute. How is a sinner blessed? The wage of sin is death. Sin, you go to hell. But the Bible says God loves his people so much that even though you can be guilty, not of a mistake, but of sinning, God said, my forgiveness is so great, I will bless you. Not because of the good you did. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. I don't know if there's any forgiven folks in church today. But long before you shout about all the great things God is doing for you, remember you can shout about this. God has blessed you because he will not count your sins against you. Now your friends might and your family folks might because them people don't know how to forget nothing. They still hold the stuff against you. You did when you was a child, when you didn't know no better. But up in heaven, God said, well, I'm going to cross that one out. She ain't got to pay for this. I love what God does, Brother Charles. The Bible says in Psalm 103 and 2, as far as the east is from the west. That's what I like about God. God knows when to move things out the way. See, people, Brother Horn player. Some folks you know may just be one mistake away from bringing up what you did five years ago. Because though they forgave you, they didn't move it, they just put it in the closet. And they will use it against you. So here's what God does. God understands we understand direction. He said, now how far is west from east? In America, between New York and L.A., it's four time zones. 
God says, I move your sin so far away that it will not be counted during your lifetime. Those people try to bring it back up against you. I know about that now. I got that. But the Lord says that if I forgive you now, I'll remove your transgression from you. In other words, it may be on the record down at Cook County Jail. But in heaven, don't worry about it. Every time that spirit come back and say, well, remember what you did? Remember what you did? Remember how you was? See, some of y'all are ashamed to go to your purpose because you're scared somebody's going to remember your past. Here's what I tell for. I walk right up in there. Hey! How y'all doing? What's up? He sure got a lot of nerve. I sure do. I'm forgiven. Yes, indeed. I ain't worried about it. Don't care about it. You need to get over it, boo-boo, because I'm moving on. And you don't have time to sit around here and worry about what people say about your past. Okay, you had a baby when you were young. They ain't no baby no more. They grown up. They got their own kids. I got over it. I'm past it. So some of y'all, y'all know, them babies only one taking care of you now. Amen. I'm just here to let you know that God forgives sin. Last thing, last thing. He said, he said, he said I'll, I'll hear from heaven. God said, I'll be notified in heaven of what you're dealing with. I'll forgive your sin. Number last, I will heal their land. Now, it's important it doesn't say a land. Understand this now. Understand. I'm trying to help somebody. This ain't all people like you. This ain't all black people. This ain't all Church of God people. This ain't all old people. This is you. Their land. Circle that. If this is Africa, I'd take 40 minutes to explain their land to you. We don't have that time. I got four minutes. <laughs> he said, I will heal their land. Write down the word heal. When God heals, it's not practice medicine. It, it means that I will mend it properly. The Hebrew word means to mend properly. To cure it. To make it whole. You will not walk with a limp. You will not have a scar. I will heal your land. When God heals, that's a different kind of healing. God heals your heart. You don't hurt no more. You don't leave blood trail everywhere you go. When God heals your mind, you're not crazy sometimes. You write all time. Okay? That's why I tell people, well, I got to go back when you ain't healed yet. Go on back and get it right. That's why I tell people. That's why I tell people, yeah, folks have gone through some serious physical, mental, emotional things, but when God touches you, if you or if you just touch the hem of his garment, he said, she said, I can be made whole. The, the, the Greek word for the Hebrew word, I can be healed totally. In other words, my cramps will leave me, whether they're physically or emotionally or mentally. Some of you all, your energy is low because you are always in pain. You need a healing from God. He said, I will heal their what? Their land. The word land is eretz in the Hebrews. Eretz. It's a firm ground. It means to be firm. The place where you stand. The firm. It is a, it's also a way of life. It is where you live. It's how you live. It's in your marriage. It's in your community. He said, I will heal what you're in, what you have to live on. I will heal the thing that you, that you use to sustain you. If your marriage is supposed to sustain you, I will heal that thing. If, if, if it's your finance, I will heal your finances. I'll make your credit strong. I will heal your land. Heal. I'll heal your church. That's where your faith is. That's where you pay your tithes to. Because land, as I told you before, represents any realm or any domain in which an organized entity exists. 
that's why you may not be as people say uh, well healed as other folks, but you are more healed than them because you're more stable than they are. You watch folks. I mean, they may not be super rich. I've always wondered how people that got billions of dollars kill themselves. Really? Let, let me try that. Let me. God, God, give me some extra money. Let me see. I might grow some hair back if I got more money than I need. I... But you can have stuff and not be stable. If your ground is shaky, your balance is off. You can have a nice house to put your family in, but if your relationship with your husband or wife is shaky, even though you got a house, y'all don't even sleep in the same bedroom no more. Forget sitting at the table. Boy, I wish I had time, but I don't. <laughs> See, the Bible, Brother Charles, never says what the time frame of healing is. But God will heal the land. That's what the Bible says. It, it may take a minute for your marriage to get healed, but, but the whole thing can come back together again. It may take a season for your body to be healed. But if God promised your body to be healed, that's why Beverly called up here and said, have all the saints pray for my husband. I mean, they, I mean when you look at Bev and Ted, they're a distinguished looking couple. They, look, they write off of Ebony, Ebony or Essence Magazine Senior. And when they come here, everybody look at them and say, they look, they rich. They look, like, they look rich. I mean, they sit, usually right, sit right over there. But when he found out last month he had colon cancer, he, they said, look, it devastated them. And we've been out to their retirement home in Atlanta, beautiful place. They still love God. And they have a summer home up here, up north. But the reality was that woman said, for all the money we have and everything we have, God told me when I stopped crying. See, I cried for days. She called here, what, three weeks ago, Saturday night, and said, tell all the saints. Pray for Ted. Now, they found the cancer. We saw it on thing. But they believe because of the type of cancer. It's already in his lymph nodes and his bones. But God gave me one word. He said, tell the saints to pray that it stays where it is. Yes, yes, yes. That it don't move. Yes. That, that, that nothing, that it hasn't gone anywhere but that. Yes. And they made them wait 10 days to get the results. Yes. Then when the results came in, they said, it couldn't be right. They made them take all the tests over again. Yes. Because medicine don't understand, God. I, I believe in medicine. I got a doctor. I got a doctor. I got that. But when they, they sat up and down, she, she, she said, she went and got the phone last night. She said, she said since January, when we, she got country because she's very articulate. Since January, <laughs> tell the sense, we looked at the thing. And the doctor said, I don't understand. <laughs> because th this is a moving cancer. But the doctor said, this cancer has not moved one iota. It hadn't touched his lymph nodes. They said it was in his bones. It didn't move to his bones. And they canceled all of his radiation treatments. And said, this cancer is so easy. They'll be here Thanksgiving, Christmas. You'll see them. Why wouldn't you pray if your land is in trouble? So I go, let me say, God will fix it. If you let him. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God will fix it. If you let him. When you read 2 Chronicles 7.14, it may seem a little too biblical for some. When you read the text, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from wicked ways, then I will, will, will. So what I was able to do was to go into some Hebrew translations. And so I'm going to leave you with Just play something soft there, Brother Frank. Anything. Just don't play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star like that. Just play something. <laughs> That's our new youth pastor, so. Amen. And if you ever have a hard time understanding God's love. We took this translation from the original Hebrew and took every word and broke it down in plain, ordinary 21st century English. And it goes something like this. You can read with me. It's, the Bible says in verse 14, I will hear intelligently and I will pay attention 
very close attention and even make a proclamation from the place where I dwell, the lofty, visible arch in which the clouds What he was saying, that's verse 14, if my people who are called by my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, said, he, says, he says, then then he gets to the then part. He says, then I will pardon and spare and forgive all of their offenses, their habitual sinfulness, and the penalty associated with the sinfulness. And I will purify and I Ain't that some good news? But that's not all. He said, in the end, he said, I will what? I will also mend as if by stitching or cure or cause to be healed, restored and mended, to make repairs, to make whole their way of life and the firm earth where they dwell. What a promise. Close your Bibles.